Uh, welcome back. Welcome back uh, to uh, Privacy and Security in Online Social Media Course. This is uh, week 11. Uh, so what we thought we would do for week 11 and week 12 uh, is to actually uh, delve deeper into some of the topics that we have been seeing until now and particularly taking some specific papers, taking some specific research work, uh, look at uh, what they did. Uh, I've also done this uh, in the past, uh, what they have done, but go slightly more deeper in terms of uh, specific uh, methods, specific algorithms or whatever. For example, today we're going to do uh, uh, NLP, uh, BERT, uh, and uh, we'll go deeper like this for the, for, the, for the content in week 11 and week 12. So we're hoping that we'll cover like four or five different uh, uh, papers, methods, and algorithms through this process. Okay, so today we'll start with uh, uh, Prashant, who will do the, uh, you are aware of Prashant, he did uh, week uh, three content also uh, in terms of NLP. Okay. Uh, hello everyone, uh, well, welcome to today's uh, uh, lecture. So today we are going to discuss uh, a phenomenon called uh, divisive topics, which is very, uh, very prevalent and uh, uh, Sometimes in your face on social networks. So uh, a very simple example of a divisive topic would be uh, a topic like demonetization in India, which would which would invite uh, invite opinions from a wide variety of wide, wide sections of the people, and sometimes these opinions could be uh, agreeing, but most of the times disagreeing with each other. Right. So uh, so. Uh, to, to use another motivating, exa motivating example for this, uh, here I have put screenshot of a particular uh, of uh, two Reddit posts, and the, uh, if you look at them closely, both of them are talking about climate change. Right? The image on your left is talking about uh, how climate change deniers are quote unquote ridiculous, where, where whereas the image on your right is talking about how, how liberals. Uh, have misinterpreted cli climate change and is presenting the alternative fact about it. Right? So here is a topic, the, uh, the topic being climate change, but it is inviting opinions which is uh, quite opposite to each other and uh, this is where a discussion can turn into, uh, a, a question can turn into being a very contentious one which will uh, uh, which will invite comments, discussions, and so on and so forth. Right. So, if you, these are Reddit posts, but if you scroll down, what you will see is that there's a long list of replies, replies to replies, and it keeps on going. Right. So, uh, this is a phenomenon that we will uh, we will try to look at it uh, a bit closely and specifically from an NLP lens. Right. Uh, we will look at some techniques which uh, which are uh, which are which are NLP heavy. And we'll try to understand them how we can utilize them, right? Utilize them to derive some actionable insight out of uh, out of let's say social data. Just to check that with the uh, uh, right. So, uh, what are the implications of uh, such uh, divisive topics? Divisive topics, right? Uh, you you are sure that uh, uh, if you have if you operated on Reddit, uh, you would see that. There are uh, each community has a set of moderators, right? So if there if there is a particular comment or a particular post which violates community rules, they would be taken down, right? And it is often a joke that moderating on a Reddit community is a full time job. And there have been studies in the past which have tried to analyze what is the monetary value of that uh, involuntary uh, time that a particular moderator is putting in, right? So uh, without such moderation, uh, it, it, these communities. Uh, with these discussion communities can uh, can delve into a uh, lot of problems, right? So uh, moderation on a Reddit community, for example, is quite crucial. Another uh, another aspect of this could be that if you, if you are a, a prevalent user of a social network uh, and if you are uh, scrolling it endlessly and you are exposing yourself to content which is harmful. Uh, it, it has impacts on uh, your your health, your mental health, and uh, so on and so forth. Right. So uh, the ability to understand uh, if a topic is divisive, and if a topic is divisive, why is it divisive? 
all of these aspects are important when uh, especially on discussion forums online discussion forums right just to uh, add some things that we have seen in the uh, content uh, of the course also right uh, a couple of weeks back we if you remember we saw uh, hate speech content we have seen content uh, uh, that can be polarizing right so i think the divisive is in one way that probably this paper this uh, set of uh, body of work is presenting uh, but in the larger context i think polarized content uh, your your hate speech all of this will probably the method that we are going to be talking about may be very similar if you were to study those topics also all right so uh, let's let's move forward uh, so uh, one particular uh, paper that that try to uh, try to analyze these divisive topics on 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 a particular social network uh, was uh, was this paper called linguistic characterization of divisive topics online and they present a case study around three particular particularly divisive topics like abortion climate change and gun control uh, again these are topics probably which are uh, uh, more us centric but nonetheless uh, the approaches that uh, the approaches that they, are, uh, they they take are are probably uh, a good take away from this paper so uh, any paper any research paper uh, is basically structured into different different sections so we will also uh, go through that paper section wise so in the introduction is where uh, authors will uh, introduce what a divisive topics is any divisive topic is one that you go it evokes opinionated and polarized polarizing conversations right uh, and the the most important question they try to ask uh, in this paper is what makes a conversation particular uh, around a particular topic contentious right what is a topic that will that will that will be divisive when it, when it is being discussed in a forum right uh, and here is where they will also uh, make a clear distinction between what uh, for a divisive topic also there could be a uh, there could be a part of that discussion which is healthy where people are sharing their point of views and uh, the exchange is very healthy right it, it, and the other end of that spectrum is where it devolves into shouting matches right where uh, the participants in that discussion are not really interested in uh, exchanging views or discussing uh, in a uh, orderly manner but rather it it uh, it becomes a sh shouting context right so uh, again uh, authors also mention what could be a potential use of this study uh, one uh, one aspect is the detection of such of a, such a uh, such a discussion which is which is divisive and harmful right uh, so detection being one of the use cases or one of the uh, potential use cases second one could be user enculturation right Uh, by user enculturation, use uh, what authors mean is that uh, if you are a new uh, new uh, if you are a new participant on a particular social network, you have just created your account. Uh, the the initial content that you are getting exposed to, if 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 we can control in some manner that you are not exposed right away to a very uh, harmful uh, polarizing content. Uh, then maybe your uh, your lifespan on that platform would be a much more better one, right? And also it would be uh, better for the user from a, a mental health point of view. Right? So using these as the motivating factors, uh, they boil down their research this this particular research into two main research questions, right? Uh, one uh, the research question one is can we accurately predict such contentiousness in a conversation second thing is uh, if a particular uh, uh, if a particular uh, conversation is contentious or non contentious what are the different characteristics that are uh, differentiating these two right what are the uh, what are the uh, specific linguistic characteristics that are uh, that, that are differentiating a contentious conversation versus a non contentious conversation now uh, why particularly linguistic because uh, uh, how they have motivated this particular research question is also that uh, it should be explainable Uh, a particular uh, particular algorithm can uh, can categorize it into a, a x category or y category but can we 
dig a bit deeper can we actually answer the question what are the properties which are which are making the algorithm lean this way or that way right uh, having explainability is crucial because that then is when uh, uh, the chances of a particular algorithm being trusted is a bit better and also the, the chances that you will over the years or over the months uh, would uh, improve that algorithms are much better right so that is why explainability uh, is an important factor and that, that is why uh, authors uh, go a step beyond than just accurate prediction so uh, okay uh, so we have defined what are the two research questions that are that we are going to ask but how are we going to approach that right how, uh, what are the methodology what are the tools what are the uh, what are the tools that we would use to answer these questions right so uh, here uh, authors uh, focus on three particular divisive topics one is abortion climate change and uh, gun control and uh, you uh, by collecting data around these three topics they would they would create a data set for uh, testing their prediction algorithm and to address rq2 what they what they would do is that uh, they would they would try to analyze what are the features that are impacting a particular prediction right and uh, and uh, further down the slides we will see that uh, there there are actually factors which are clearly indicative of what is uh, what is contentious as what is not right so uh, let's uh, move further and let's look at how uh, how they have how the authors and the researchers have collected their data for this particular study uh so what author uh, what the researchers do is that they they uh, collect and filter uh posts and comments from reddit and the time period in question is 2007 to 2000 uh, 2014 february right uh, so what they collect uh, is basically the title of a post uh, the self text uh, and the comments right so in reddit uh, there is usually a, a title of a post and in in uh, in that post there is also Uh, the original poster would also write some text uh, in support of the title right and uh, and what follows after that are a list of comments replies replies to replies and uh, so on and so forth so this being the overall data uh, next authors all uh, how do we label this how, how do we label a conversation as a contentious one or a non contentious one so here is uh, here is where uh, uh, authors actually do not do a lot of manual supervision right so the the most ideal way uh, more, or the most con conventional way of doing data annotation is that or creating data annotated data is that you a, a human goes through goes through the uh, the text in this case and uh, labels it manually after reading it whether it's a contentious one or non contentious one Right, this this would create a gold gold truth data. However, here researchers adopt a method called distance supervision. Right, distance supervision is where uh, I will I will deploy a heuristic, which I am sure, which I am pretty sure that it will it will create good labels. Right, so the here is the heuristic that authors uh, adopt here is called a upvote ratio. Right, uh, so I'm sorry. yeah upvote ratio is is essentially a uh, ratio of number of upvotes that a post got and the uh, denominator being the number of down downvotes that i got so why is this why is this a good a good heuristic right uh, why is this a good good heuristic to say whether a conversation was uh, uh, divisive or not or whether a conversation was contentious or not so the idea the idea behind this heuristic is that uh if you if if this was not a topic on which uh, if a particular post is uh, is something on which there were no op uh, opposite or opposing uh, point of views there it is likely that either the post has gotten just too many upvotes or the post if it was disliked it would just get lot of downvotes right if there is an equal balance between or more or less an equal balance between uh, uh, upvotes and downvotes that means that there were actually uh, opposite point of views on this particular topic right so this is the heuristic that they that they use and if if a upvote ratio for a particular post is within the bottom quart, uh, quartile 
that is when it is uh, it is it is considered a post is considered as a, a contentious one right if it does not meet this criteria then the post is non contentious right and author specifically can uh, uh, gather post just for divisive topics right so in a uh, for a divisive topic for example like climate change authors want to create a set of contentious post and a non contentious post right so this becomes a very, uh, this becomes a much more harder problem in that sense uh yeah so based on based on based on the previous two things that we just saw the source of the data is reddit uh, there are these many uh, there, there was this particular heuristic of upvote ratio that we used to create a final data set right so they end up with a data set of uh, uh of three topics abortion climate change and gun control and uh, the n in this slide is uh, indicative of how many posts are there in each of these sub topics uh so for collecting posts centered around abortion climate change and gun control uh, authors uh, rely on just key keyword uh, keyword based matching right so uh, uh, for example if uh, if a post had words like pro life pro choice fetus abortion then it was a post related to abortion if there were uh, keywords like global warming climate change greenhouse etc etc then it was a climate change post and if it was ar15 and uh, nra assault rifle second amendment then it was a, a post related to gun control right again this is also a heuristic this is this is not uh, this is not a human uh, created data uh, so there is that there could be some samples in the whole in the whole uh, data set which are probably not really talking about gun control but are, have filtered through right uh, yeah so uh, having uh, having uh, described what the data was now to reach to the stage where we can say whether a post was contentious or not or to reach to the stage where we can say that okay this post was contentious because because it had this particular characteristic uh we have to uh, create some features for this uh, these posts right uh, again this they, uh, this is a good point for a good point to call back to what we saw during week 3 where we said to classify a text as positive or negative we would have to convert this into features right so some of the features that authors use are listed here uh, these are called discourse acts or discourse patterns uh, so uh, discourse acts are basically uh, these uh, broad 10 categories right whether a post or whether a comment was a question right whether a post was an answer whether it was an announcement uh whether there was an uh, whether it was an agreeing post right so for example there was a comment uh and i am replying to that comment and am i agreeing or disagreeing uh, that that's what the this particular discourse act is and there are a uh, few more like that right uh so some of these discourse acts also have a relation uh to the uh, to uh, to a previous post or a previous comment right if 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 the discourse act is agree it has to agree with something right so uh, some of these discourse acts have, have relation to a previous comment or a previous post uh taking these uh, taking these 10 uh, discourse acts authors classify each of each of the each of the post into 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 these categories right uh, they do so by using a previous data set and uh, they use a model called bird and find unit right so uh, we will come to bird and discuss what bird is and how uh, how how is it uh, how is it useful in today's nlp towards the later part of our uh, discussion today uh, for, so for, for now just treat bird as this classifier which takes a post as an input and gives gives these uh, give these gives these uh, Uh, class assignments as one of these ten classes, right? So just uh, just treat it as a black box that is uh, classifying for one of these ten classes. So this was feature number one, discourse act, whether a post was a question, answer, announcement, etc., etc., etc. 
second thing was sentiment uh, sentiment about whether a post was positive or negative and they use uh, a method uh, 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 a technique called beta or a tool called beta uh, and this is this is something that is based on uh, word counts and uh, simple dictionary lookups but uh, this is this is a very popular tool but as long as you are sure that it is english and as long as you are sure that it is uh, it is properly worded and not uh, and not written in a very unconventional way tools like beta are very popular and and, and work to a very de- uh, decent accuracy so taking a uh, beta uh, tool as a sentiment analyzer for each post they create a bunch of features right what was the maximum sentiment what was the minimum post sentiment uh, what was the uh, maximum level of positivity in the comments right and so on and so forth right so using a sentiment analyzer i have created let's say and then other other features uh, just based on that so uh, another set of features that uh, that authors use is some a tool called liwc liwc is a tool which uh, which again looks at word counts and assigns uh, assigns scores for different different aspects of a text right for example just by looking at uh, just by looking at the text uh, I, i can for example give a score of what how, how many swear words were there right looking at the uh, looking at the uh, count of uh, particular pronouns or particular uh, particular verbs i can i can uh, assign a score for a particular category right so the they, they create a 64 dimension uh, vector uh, which are which are basically talking about aspects like what was the attentional focus what were the social relationships what were the thinking styles and others right all of these 64 64 dimensions are basically taken or computed using this tool called liwc right and liwc is basically a, a, a tool which is, which keeps a dictionary of okay if this word is there then it 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 means that it is talking about a social relationship if this word is there it is talking about thinking stacks right and based on those word counts it will give you a score for each of these categories so this is just an example but uh, you can see that it gives scores for a huge number of categories out of which authors select 64 of those of those categories and take that score as a feature right <clears throat> in addition to all the features that they have already created which was discourse ads sentiment scores and the lic liwc features uh, they also convert text into representations using two methods one is tfidf and another one is a bert model representation tfidf is is uh, again something that we discussed in week 3 is is basically a way of converting uh, raw corpus into its numerical representation based on how many times a word occurred and whether it occurred in all documents or uh, only in this particular document right that's what the tfid was small call back uh, but in addition to tfid they also use bert bert embeddings uh, bert embeddings again uh, if you look at it as a block, black block uh, sorry if you look at it as a black box it is it is it is something that takes text as an input and gives you a vector representation of it converts text into numerical representation so that uh, downstream algorithms can crunch them right uh, but uh, we'll look at what in more detail uh, towards the end of this discussion so in addition to all of those there are few more uh, few more characteristics regarding gender location prolificity and that particular post belong to which of these subreddits right so uh, what you see here uh, is basically a lot of feature engineering right you had a post you categorized into these two categories well and good but uh, to uh, to to classify them into uh, contentious divisive or not divisive and to to understand or to explain what were the characters characteristics driving a particular topic into one of these categories you the authors created a bunch of a bunch of features right uh, discourse acts sentiment liwc uh, 
uh, uh, text representations and then a few more characteristics like gender, location, prolificity, and what are the subtitles, right? So these are the factor. These are uh, uh, these all of these put together would go into this uh, this task of predicting whether a particular conversation was contentious or not, right? Uh, and using those features, uh, authors train two models. One is logistic regression, and another is a simple uh, multi-layer perceptron. Uh, one thing I think it is worth noting at this point is the choice of logistic regression. Right? Uh, in an age where uh, deep learning machine or, or more complicated, uh, more state-of-the-art uh, uh, machine learning algorithms are preferred. Why have authors? Uh, why have authors relied on logistic regression? Okay. Uh, food for thought. But again, we will discuss this uh, in a few in a few slides. So, a couple of things that I said. Uh, so, uh, the Prashant mentioned an idea or a so to say topic called feature extraction, right? Uh, if you remember in the earlier weeks, particularly of the week of fake news. Uh, we did that, right? Given a tweet, can you actually find out uh, uh, number of likes it has, number of uh, who posted, what time did the post was created, how many follow following does the user have? All of those we used to find out whether the tweet is a fake uh, content or not, fake tweet or not. That's fake feature uh, engineering. And another connector I wanted to make for LIWC also is that. Uh, even though here that uh, LIWC tool is being used for, uh, sort of say, this this content which can be contentious, uh, but but yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can make the connections to other uh, other topics that we have seen in the class where we can actually use LIWC. Right? Again, looking at uh, uh, fake news is one. The other connection was the uh, law enforcement agencies that we saw in the class, which is to find out actionable information from a tweet which a police can use to make uh, any uh, decisions depending on that. Uh, so LIWC is a tool which can help you with many of the things that, uh, many of the topics that we have seen in the, in the class also. So the, the plug I wanted to give was feature, uh, engineering and uh, LIWC. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, uh, having converted all the posts into these features, uh, let's look at how good are these two models that the author shows at, uh, at detecting whether a post is contentious or not, right? Uh, so the a good way to re read this table is that, uh, as authors mentioned, they use two types of classifiers. Right? Let's go back. They use two classifiers. One is logistic regression using TF-ID features and ML multi-layer perceptron using BERT features, right? So the bottom half is MLP and BERT, the top half is logistic regression in TF IDF. Uh, and uh, this particular uh, row, the first row in each of these buckets is telling you, if you just use the TF IDF and logistic regression, this is the accuracy, this is the precision, this is the recall, etc. etc. Okay. Uh, now let's add one feature that is this score side. We get 0.66 as an accuracy. Now to the TF IDF, let's just add gender. We will get 0 0.644 and so on and so forth. Right? Now, the last uh, row in this whole bucket is that TF IDF plus all of these features combined, uh, what, is that, uh, what is the accuracy precision recall that we are getting? Right? So, based on these, based on these uh, uh, models and these numbers, uh, predictive numbers that they get, performance measures that they get, uh, what authors take away from this table is that augmenting a particular baseline with all of these features invariably across all the topics, let it be abortion, climate change or gun control, performance increases, right? Uh, and as you keep adding more and more linguistic features, the performance keeps increasing. Uh, there are also uh, some edge cases here where adding a particular feature like gender is not increasing performance in any way, right? In clear, in case of climate change, by adding gender, you can see that compared to the baseline, the numbers have decreased, the performance measures have decreased, accuracy has decreased, 
right so uh, this is this is based on this authors also say like maybe all of these features or all of these linguistic features are not equally performing well across different different topics right uh and we will see further down the slides also that some of these uh, some of these features are probably very good for some topics but may not be good for a, a, a different topic right? uh second uh, another part of this prediction predicting whether a post is contentious or not another aspect of it is how early can i predict right if you look at it there is a post and there is a bunch of comments uh comments can will obviously grow over the time but can we detect the post and categorize it as contentious or non contentious early in its life span right let's say that i have just posted the uh, i have just posted a particular uh, post on on a, on a particular subreddit uh, when can you when can an algorithm tell that this post is contentious right away or after it has let's say gotten 10 comments or let's say uh, after it has gotten 20 comments so on and so forth right so on the x axis what you see is the percentage of comments right what was the performance this is this is i yeah this is accuracy in f1 what was the performance after 10% of the comments were posted after 20% were posted so on and so forth right so the earlier that you can predict from a moderator's point of view or from a platform's point of view the better right because earlier uh, earlier prediction can help in you know controlling or moderating that particular post right so to, uh, the the primary takeaway here is that uh, if the red uh, the 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 red uh, line that you see here is for tf idf and you can see that it grows uh, grows as the number of percentage of comments grows the performance of tf idf model increases as the percentage of comment grows but a model like bird to start with itself it has a very high prediction accuracy right uh, so uh, while tf idf reaches there uh, the um, uh, performance of a model like bird and the associated features uh, can help a lot in early detection of a, of a post as a contentious or non contentious uh and more specifically models can obtain 88% of the peak performance for accuracy after after the first 20% of the comments right so uh this is this is based on these results one could claim or authors have claimed that uh our methodology the, the one that is proposed in the paper is good at early detection right so uh so i think uh, if 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 uh, looking at uh, looking at looking at it from a researcher's point of view if i think uh, not just not stopping just at the performance measure of a particular model but going beyond and making a use case out of a uh, more important use case or a more uh, analytical use case out of that particular uh, metric or that particular performance metric is 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 probably the key takeaway for me right uh, here i know that okay a bird model like bird can perform well well and good but uh, by analyzing that how early or how late a particular model is in detecting such posts can can actually uh, enhance the use case or or could tell a cautionary tale about the use case right so not just relying at a performance measure but digging a bit deeper into them is always uh, always appreciated and always used right now we come to the rq2 part of this particular study right uh if we see remember from the initial slides rq1 was can we detect accuracy rq number 2 was okay having detected it uh, can we explain what what caused or what what were the driving factors behind the post being contentious or not right so uh also a few slides back i said why did authors or we asked a important question why did authors rely on a uh, a, a technique like logistic regression when you could have used uh, more advanced let's say uh, more advanced ml ml algorithm or uh, mlp or uh, neural networks right one one important uh, 
one important advantage a method like logistic regression has is that it can it gives you explainability right and since authors wanted that that is that is why a part of their uh, part of their model was relying on uh, a method like logistic regression right a regression logistic or otherwise is basically a equation of the form uh, y is equal to ax plus uh, dy plus so on and so forth right of all the features uh, of, all, of all the features that you are regressing for there are weights associated with each feature right for example uh, 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 for example y is equal to ax plus b right the variable x is associated with the weight a right so by saying that if if x increases by a unit measure what will y increase by right Th that is that is that that level of explainability is something methods like logistic regression or linear regression can give right so that is why uh, um, uh, using logistic regression what uh, what authors do is that they they compute uh, the importance of these features importance of uh, a feature in in a post being contentious or non contentious right and what you see in this plot is basically basically top 10 features which are increasing the likelihood that a post will become contentious and bot bottom are the features that would uh, decrease the uh, probability that a post being post, post is contentious right uh, and if you look at it more closely all the features are the features that we have discussed earlier right for example maximum comment toxicity is something that we saw earlier given a post how toxic a comment is Right. Uh, another example is this minimum post sentiment. Yeah. Uh, all of these are the features that that they were uh, they were manually created. Linguistic features that were manually created. Yeah. So based on based on based on these uh, based on based on these uh, values, uh, what authors uh, conclude is that. Uh, Certain discourse features like uh, disagreement, negative reaction, or question are always indicative whether a topic is contentious or not, right? And this is something that they have shown across three uh, three topics, whether it be abortion, climate control, or gun control, right? Uh, a presence of certain uh, discourse features like uh, other to negative uh, negative reaction or negative to disagree. This is uh, these are indicative of a post being contentious, right? So discourse features are likely the ones that are uh, important when you are trying to understand whether a post is contentious or not, right? Uh, now coming to location, location could have differing uh, differing impact across different topics, right? For in case of abortion and gun control, uh, you can see that location matters a lot, but when it comes to climate change, uh, not so much. Right, and uh, and this is probably also uh, intuitive uh, or makes sense because uh, abortion laws are or gun control laws are specific to a particular geographical entity. Right, they vary uh, country to country, and in, in some, in, in, at least in case of US, they also vary state to state. Right, so uh, yeah, so this is where. Uh, uh, Location being important or non-important across different topics, and there are other takeaways based on based on these numbers only that uh, gender could have a very extremely variable impact. Uh, our high level of toxicity in the post titles are a strong predictor of contentious. Right? Uh, irrespective of the finer details here, I think what is important is that uh, based on uh, based on logistic regression and the associated weights uh, what authors could achieve is that they could bring in explainability and analyze as to what feature is uh, important in predicting or uh, predicting as a post is contentious or not right uh, so in terms of implications i think some of this is something we have already discussed you can build a predictive model uh, you can motivate the design of tracking or monitoring system, which can which can possibly visualize contentious conversation. And this is particularly important if you are running that platform. If you are Reddit, uh, you would want to know in a dashboard whether a particular whether whether uh, whether uh, whether a particular community or whether a particular post is.
problematic right uh, because they are legal entities and they are liable for some of the content that goes on their uh, content that goes on their platform right? and uh, again in a discussion platform there are moderators and you can warn a moderator very early in a, in a post lifespan and giving them the ability to uh, control it and also by giving the explain explainability factor uh, you can you know up, you can you can tell a moderator that this post is going to be contentious and probably because of this particular reason right uh, yeah. of course there are certain limitations one of the limitations that we uh, probably touched upon was the distance supervision part uh, the post uh, when they were tagged as contentious or not not contentious this was not done manually this was done using a, a heuristic right and that that's what we meant by distance supervision right and one of the things that uh, authors also mention is that it it would as a part of future work also that they suggest is that maybe we could validate the correlation between the human judgments and the distance supervision method that we, that we employ uh final thing is that all of all of these studies uh this inference that this particular a particular feature is uh, uh is, is explaining a particular post being contentious or not this was all correlational right this was correlational because we looked at logistic regression features right uh other end of other uh, other end of the seesaw is uh, something called uh uh causal causal inference right uh, i'm sure uh, it, it it would be discussed somewhere in the course uh, but causal inference is where you can actually make a claim saying that this particular factor was driving this feature right uh, now all you are able to say based on this analysis is that okay a correlation uh, a contentious post all is uh, correlated with uh, a location name being there or the gender being there right uh, whereas if you if you can do for causal inference what you can actually say or what you can actually claim is that this particular factor is driving that particular phenomenon right uh, that is something that that is an obvious limitation of this this study right and uh, yeah based based on all of this these are these are the key contribution of the study uh, we uh, authors have boiled down a conversation into specific linguistic characteristics based on that they predict whether a particular post is contentious or not with reasonable accuracy and third is that uh, based based on these linguistic features they cover some generic and some topic specific conversation characteristics right right uh, so this is this is all uh, that we have to cover on the on this particular paper and this particular approach Uh, so let's take a small detour and try to understand what was this uh, bird and all of that technology that we just saw a small call back to what we discussed during week 3 right when we looked at uh, uh, features like word to vec or when we looked at features like tfitf we 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 made a mention of this fact that none of these word embeddings are contextual right for example the uh, a bank of a river versus a financial bank the word bank is common but depending on the context its meaning is obviously changing but feature uh, but met, uh, numerical representations like tf idf or bird uh, would not change based on the context right whether it whether bank is seen in this particular context or this particular context it doesn't matter the numerical representation for the word bank remains the same for your uh, for your uh, downstream task right uh, so this was this this was this was a limitation of those representations so uh, people uh, started looking at something called contextual word representation what it essentially means that if a bank if a word bank occurs in different context its representation should change to reflect that right and bird is a very very popular way to do that right uh bird started in 2017 uh, came out as a paper in 2017 and it has literally taken the uh, nlp world by storm with 
every uh, if, if a new model being coming uh, coming out every every second day right so let's look at what bert is right bert is based on this uh, architecture called transformer architecture right uh, transformer as an architecture is not just uh, famous or most sought after in nlp but it has slowly also been adopted in vision, vision computer vision applications over the last two years two three years right so it essentially has a structure like this where you have an encoder stack and that feeds your decoder stack and uh, you, you basically are modeling a sequence to a sequence right input could be a language like english and output could be its translation in, in hindi right so transformer as an architecture was actually proposed just for machine translation task right but uh, as the architecture got very very famous uh, people started looking at okay what are the other use cases that we can make out of it and one of those use cases was why don't we just take this encoder architecture away right? and just use that to create representations for our world right uh, so as we said uh, the, uh, the the representation of the world bank or any world would change based on the context right the way that it does is one of the ways that this architecture is able to encode that is this phenomena called attention right attention uh, is basically a, a demonstrative example of, of that particular phenomena is this right so if a sentence is the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired right because it was too tired now how do you know uh, what is it referring to right this particular uh, this particular uh, word what what is the word it referring to right for you as uh, as as a language speaker in your speaker you are it's pretty clear for you that it is uh, it is referring to the animal right but how do you teach a network to do that right how do you teach a network to pay attention to this particular uh, part of the sentence when you are actually uh, processing it right so network here is learning that when you are processing the word it in this whole sequence you are actually paying a lot of attention to this because that is what it is referring to right so uh, each word has a relative importance to all the other words right that is what attention is uh, again like transformer architecture is uh, is a very pivotal point in deep learning research the concept of attention itself is a very pivotal point in deep learning research right while we cannot or will not go into the details of how this is done and the mathematical and the uh, architectural background of it uh, we will try to cover it in some abstract manner right uh, if you drill deeper uh, this is what the architecture of bird looks like but uh, again uh, not something that we can cover in detail here but i would refer you to a blog called the illustrated transformer Uh, by J. L. Lamar, and most of these illustrations are taken from there. Uh, they provide you a very good in-depth uh, analysis of what this ne- architecture is actually doing. So I would strongly urge you to uh, go and uh, have a look at that. Okay. Uh, so this is a particular uh, stack of encoder. Now, if you stack uh, multiple layers on one top or the other, uh, you can you will come up with Bert or Bert Large, right? so bert is 12 such uh, layers uh, bert large is 24 such layers right uh, again uh, i'll refer you to the illustrated transformer by j l amar uh, they would they would discuss in a lot of detail as to what is going on within these uh, within these components right uh, right uh so that being bird what bird uh, again if you look at it at abstracted level what it will take is that it will take an input sequence and it will give you uh, a representation for that input sequence right so using that representation you can actually feed it into a classifier that classifier could be anything it could be a a logistic regression classifier it could be a, a feed forward network classifier it could be anything right so uh as 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 let's say as practitioners what we can look at bird is uh, something that would convert a piece of text to uh, 
to a numerical representation for any downstream task why is it better than df idf for work to back and all of the uh, uh, or that particular family so again these are the uh, reasons that we already saw right it is contextual in nature and it 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 has this phenomena rise to import this phenomena called attention and all of these reasons are 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 what is driving a success of models like bird and family of bird okay so uh, just to uh, uh uh just to look at uh, how to use them i have a small uh, code demo i'll quickly go through it uh, it's not take a, a lot of time right uh, yeah. so yeah so one very particularly famous library for using transformer architecture or models like bird is this library by uh, hugging face called transformers uh, so obviously you have to install that before you can start using it but uh, uh, so we start with a sentence like this and this could be whichever whatever sentence that you can that that you that you want uh, this could be the text of the post right in, in in case of the study that we just saw it could just be a comment or uh, the body of the post or the title of the post right uh, that that is the input uh, the first thing that we do is we break this string into sub components right uh, we tokenize it into its uh, constituents and then we pass it to a particular model and the model being word uh so what what it will give you is uh uh again okay, a numerical representation right so the the input text was of size 1 cross 6 we input uh we input one sentence it was broken down into six tokens by this tokenizer and once we passed uh once we passed that particular tokenized sentence into this model what we end up with is this particular representation right 6 plus 760 right uh, so again these are numbers numbers that 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 you would that you would feed into a classifier if you were doing your classification task right so uh so this was the model that we were using if you actually print the model you can see that there are uh we started with the sentence we converted into uh, converted or broke broke down that sentence into tokens using a tokenizer we fed that into a model bird model called bird model and uh, what we ended up with is a is a vector representation of that right so the sentence uh, was broken down into six tokens we started with one sentence that one particular sentence was six tokens and after passing it through the model what we got was 6 plus 768 matrix so uh this matrix is basically a vector representation right like how you were using tf idf representation of word to word representation if you were to use word you would take this matrix and feed it to uh, the next part of your uh, pipeline right so uh, we had we had uh, so we started with the sentence called whatever the sentence is right this particular sentence uh, the tokenizer appended two things to it one was Uh, a token called CLS and one a token uh, at the end it appended another token called separator SEP, right? So uh, if you were to uh, uh, classify this sentence into some, let's say you were to do check sentiment of this particular sentence, right? what you would take is you would just so this CLS is is one among the uh, one among these uh, six tokens, right? Uh, this CLS and SEP are one among these six tokens, right? So uh, again, each token within the sentence has a representation, a seven sixty eight vector representation. Uh, so if you were to class, if you wanted to classify this, you would just take the CLS re- tokens representation and uh, feed it to a, a a classifier. Right? So uh, again, that is what is happening here. Uh, the BERT BERT model took a arbitrary long sentence converted into a uh, vector uh, matrix representation and you took the the vector representation of the first token called cls and classified into whatever category spam not spam 
positive sentiment negative sentiment etc 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 so uh, what so uh, this is this is where we uh, wrap up uh, what we discuss uh, what from today's discussion i think the main takeaways were uh, online social platforms being uh, being a place where there is a lot of opinion exchange that goes on some of that some of those discussions are healthy some of them are not so much uh, what we discussed or what we looked at was a particular methodology on how do we detect whether a particular post was contentious or not contentious and can we can we actually explain it in terms of what is a feature that is making a particular post contentious or not contentious right uh, detecting such post or understanding what is what is driving such post is of important to all the stakeholders in this whole ecosystem as a user it is important for me that i don't expose myself to such contentious or don't want to participate with or i don't i want to stay away as a moderator is it, it is important because you would want to detect them and you want to take some corrective action against them so as a platform owner it is important because it detects or it it, uh, it it basically showcases how healthy or unhealthy your platform is in terms of uh, in in terms of discussions right so uh yeah so this is this being uh this being one particular way of course there could be various other ways in how we detect or characterize them but this is one particular oper- operationalization of that uh, of that that particular phenomenon and with that i think we have come to the end of this session yeah 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 so hope uh, that gave you a sense of what uh, slightly next level of details about uh, bird and logistic progression and the thing uh but as always right uh, feel free to take a look at the uh, content uh, uh that uh, pointer that was given to a blog but if you have any questions please come back uh, in this course or uh, in the live uh, the outstanding session we'll be happy to actually answer your questions okay thank you thanks for watching the lecture